Well, I want to come onto those, but I'm, I'm want to explore first of all the science of it in terms of how it can work, whether it's feasible, how much it costs. Is SRM solar radiation management the path which looks as if it's more viable at the moment? No, I think it's impossible to say which is better. The fact is they're both different tools that we need to try and manage the overall climate risk, just as is cutting emissions. And there's no way to say that one is better. They do different things in the climate system in different ways. Explain to me, first of all, though, before we get into the pros and cons of it, how solar radiation management might work. So conceptually, it's simple. The Earth is in some kind of balance where we absorb sunlight and we radiate it away as infrared. And what CO2 is doing by warming the climate is making it harder for that infrared to get out. If you uh, uh, reflect away a little more sunlight by adding reflective aerosols, tiny particles, say, to the upper atmosphere. And how do you do that? Uh, you could do it with aircraft, for example. The doing it is probably not the hard part, but you could use aircraft or other methods to deliver uh, literally tons or millions of tons of very small particles to the upper atmosphere. One well, way... sort of spraying them out at, at a high altitude. Correct. And one thing this does is to mimic what volcanoes do, at least in some crude way. So large volcanoes put sulfur into the upper atmosphere, and those cool the planet. Uh, again, this Royal Society report um, that came out in 2009 did suggest that although this type of management might be, uh, solar radiation management might be relatively cheap to deploy and, and yeah. simple in the way that you've described it, uh, there are considerable uncertainties, I'm quoting from the report, about their regional consequences, and they only reduce some but not all of the effects of climate change while possibly creating other problems. How far do you recognize that? Oh, I think that's absolutely correct, and indeed I've spent a lot of time trying to look at the environmental problems that it will create and the social problems. So, I mean, it's completely clear that you cannot perfectly compensate for the environmental effects of CO2 in the atmosphere by cutting sunlight. You may, and we haven't even proved that, be able to reduce some risks of CO2 in the air by this method. Isn't there a problem, though, that you could end up with different effects in different parts of the world? I mean, you could... For example, find that although you're reducing the amount of uh, sunlight and the amount, therefore, that the Earth is, is warming up, rainfall is affected in different ways in different parts of the world. Absolutely. And, and again, we've spent a lot of time looking at exactly that and publishing papers on that, that topic. Well, and, and what conclusions have you drawn? So the conclusion is it is not exactly equal, just like climate change. So climate change itself, driven by CO2, is not equal. It affects different people, different industries, different parts of the biosphere in different ways. And so, too, solar radiation management will not be equal. I guess the problem could be that if you ended up uh, having a, or a country ended up, having a scheme whereby they had solar radiation management over their country, but the effect was that the country next door uh, ended up getting a lot less rainfall, which is one yeah. of the uh, feared consequences of this, then you could almost end up with a, a, a cause for conflict. Yes, I think this is precisely where the sort of hard geopolitical issues arise. I mean, to put it in a kind of crude way, whose hand is on the thermostat? Essentially, the, the scientists and technocrats, including myself, I guess, are helping to invent a thermostat knob. But it's much hard, easier to invent the knob than to figure out who should be in charge of it in a world with many states. No, indeed, and I want to come on to the yeah. governance, but I I'm, I'm want to ask specifically about the science of this, which is how far can you tell whether the effects of solar radiation management are then going to cause perhaps a catastrophic loss of rainfall.